Okay, so the next essay we're looking at is to discuss both views and give you your opinion. Some people use the internet to search for solutions to their medical problems. Is it a positive or negative development? Give your own opinion and examples from your own experience, okay? So what do they want to see? Your own opinion. What's your opinion? Is it negative? Is it positive? Okay, and then they want you to give personal um, examples, things you discussed. Okay, so is it a good thing that people use Google <laughs> instead of going to the doctor? <laughs> so this is quite a fun question. I think there's a lot of things you can talk about. Like there's lots of positives or negatives that just come to mind to me right now. Like it's more convenient, it's faster, it's cheaper to use the internet. Um, obviously the negatives are, you know, fake news, false information, people misdiagnosing themselves, um, people aren't experts. So I think it's quite like there's like a sort of fun debate to be had here. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this candidate has to say. So let's look at their introduction. With today's advancements of the online platforms, uh, with, these, with today's advancements in online platforms, would be better, or with... Uh, Today, with the advancement, instead of this, with the advancement of online platforms, would also be okay. It is very difficult to ignore that people search for medical information on the internet to find out solutions. Solutions to what? Math solutions, physics solutions, cooking solutions. To find solutions for the medical issues. While some people believe that using the internet is a better way to tackle medical issues, um, I think that people should consider more carefully. Should consider what more carefully? Should consider the, you know, the, maybe consider their health, consider their symptoms. Um, should consider, you know, their health more carefully and consult with a doctor. Okay, so some of these sentences don't quite feel finished. Their ideas don't feel quite finished enough. But I think as a, as an introduction, there's a lot of positives. Um, you know, they summarize the situation. Um, they give me their opinion, which I always appreciate in an introduction. I know what the candidate's going to think. Um, what the only other thing that would have would have helped this out would have been to include the subtopics a little bit more, so I know what arguments they're going to do. So, but as an introduction, quite functional, reasonably okay. Ooh, okay, so let's look at the first paragraph. On the one hand, there are some arguments that individuals very easily trust medical information online when they would like to get treatments by themselves. This means that people who are suffering from ailments tend to research symptoms to check exactly rather than making an appointment to meet professionals. Okay. Um, who are just when they like to get treatments by themselves? Okay, so this is fine. That's a topic sentence. Second sentence pe people who are suffering from ailments, ailments, good vocabulary, tend to research symptoms, symptoms, good vocabulary, to check exactly. To check what exactly? <laughs> check exactly. It, what are you checking? To research symptoms, to um, find out for themselves, to self diagnose. Is a word that we use in English, where you sort of look at your symptoms and you diagnose yourself with a with a with a disease. Uh, check exactly is, is too vague, and I don't know what what you're checking, and exactly what. Um, rather than making an appointment to meet professionals, so then we go the example. For example, one of my father's acquaintances, acquaintance, good vocabulary, um, acquaintance always self-diagnoses whenever he feels sickness on his body via Google. Always self-diagnoses himself whenever he feels sickness in his body sickness on like physically on your body you don't feel sickness you feel sickness in his body um via google okay this is because he usually watches footage footage of a doctor that appears on YouTube to figure out adequate solutions. Uh, this isn't really adequate solutions, not really used for sort of sickness and diagnosis. Um, 
you know, this is because he usually watches footage of a doctor that appears on YouTube to figure out um, his own self-treatment. Okay, so solution and problem. We don't really use solutions in, in a medical situation. If you have a cold, the doctor doesn't give you a solution. The doctor gives you a diagnosis. He gives you a treatment. You know, I have symptoms. I need to be diagnosed with an illness so I can get treated. Um, it's, we don't tend to use problem and solution too much when talking about medical issues. You could use problem if you're saying, I have a medical problem where I can't, I don't know, go to the bathroom whenever I want to. I don't know what my medical problem is to figure out. Um, I have a medical problem or I have a problem where um, I fall asleep um, at, when I'm driving. I have a medical problem where I can't go to sleep easily at night. Um, you know, so we would tend not to use solutions, though, in a medical situation. We go to the doctor for treatment rather than a solution or, you know. So in this case, he trying to figure out an adequate solution is a bit too vague and not specific enough to a medical situation. So I would say his own self-treatments rather than adequate solutions. When he feels pain in his shoulder, Savili, when, so Savili should really go here. When he feels severe pain, okay? So they should be modifying pain. When he feels severe pain in his shoulders, he watched, okay, so this candidate needs to know what, what tense are we using, okay? We've got present tense and past tense. So I think, I think this is a specific example. I think he followed the way to treat pain. Uh, eventually he did not feel it. Okay, yeah, so this is, this candidate, now we're in the past tense because we're giving a specific example. So when he felt severe pain in his shoulders, he watched an, an online video and he followed the way to treat his pain according to what a doctor said who appeared on YouTube. Eventually, he did not feel any pain in his shoulders anymore. Um, okay, so this is like quite a, this candidate's written quite a lot. The vocabulary is okay, not perfect, but they're, they're using a lot of sort of, you know, specific language and medical language, which I like. My issue is that I don't know, is this a positive or negative paragraph? This candidate hasn't given me an opinion. They, the, the first sentence should tell me, on the one hand, there are some arguments that individuals very easily trust medical information when they would like to get treatments by themselves. Is this positive or is this negative? It could be a good thing. You know, it could be a negative thing. This, this, this candidate needs to let me know. And so then they've given me this sort of example. Um, but it seems to be a positive story because he says that he followed the doctor on YouTube and he didn't have any pain in his shoulder. So I'm guessing they say, they're saying that it's a positive thing to be able to get treatment online. But this idea that very easily trust it has a negative connotation in English. It's sort of like saying it the too easily. If you do something too easily, it too or very easily trust, to trust someone very easily, usually my feeling is that, oh, this is going to be negative. You know, you trusted someone too easily and then you got tricked by them. But I think but this candidate is actually arguing that it's a positive thing because they're saying that the treatment worked. So what I would say to this candidate is they really need to make this clear in the first sentence whether this is their positive or their negative paragraph. It wasn't until I got to the end that I had to go back and think, oh, oh, they're arguing that this is a good thing, that you can diagnose it, okay? So what they really need to do is they need to come to a judgment. So was it a good thing that his father's acquaintance used Google to treat his shoulder pain, okay? You, he could do some evaluation here. Okay, so it was, this was a, it's a positive thing that we can use the internet. Um, it was quicker for my father's acquaintance. He saved money. He was able to explore alternative treatments that his, maybe his doctor didn't know about. Um, he was able to do it more conveniently in his own time. 
Um, he, in the time of like coronavirus, he was able to stay at home and get treatment rather than risking traveling to the doctors to get treatment. There's lots of evaluation here. So that's what this is missing. We've sort of got an introduction. We've got a very, his example is great. Like this whole paragraph, like about talking about his father's acquaintance, um, is a good sort of well-explained, relevant example, but he's not then evaluated it. He's not made it clear how this links strongly back to the question. So I sort of, I hope that makes sense and I can, it's, a, it's a, got a lot of strong qualities, this paragraph, but he's not evaluated and he's not told me clearly whether they think it's good or bad that you can treat yourself on the internet like this. Do it to the second paragraph, next paragraph. On the other hand, although the internet has a great impact on people's health positively, I guess that people have to think cautiously when they decide to search for medical issues online. This is a much better topic sentence. Why is it a much better topic sentence? Okay, because now I know we're going to talk about the negatives. Okay, I've got your opinion, and I know that we're going to talk about the negative things about self diagnosing online. So, this is because there is much unreliable information on the internet. Unreliable information, good vocabulary. For example, when I injured my ankle last year, I chose self treatment as I wanted to save my money. Good sentence, no problem. I read a text on the website. Uh, I read uh, on a website, or I read an article, something like that, an article on a website, a blogger wrote, the blogger, good specific vocabulary, wrote that if you feel slight pain, you do not need to go to the hospital. He also mentioned that time is key. Uh, I like this phrase, time is key. This is a very good um, high level, less common phrase, which is very good good vocabulary. However, the result of believing him was that I had to pay much money. You can't say much money, had to pay a lot more money to the hospital than I expected. Because I felt more painful following the time. I felt more following the time. Too vague. What do you mean following the time? I guess they mean afterwards. Um, you had to pay much more money than you expected because you felt that the pain increased over time. Over time, the pain was your pain was increasing. Um, I'm not sure. Moreover, a doctor diagnosed uh, my part of muscles covering the ankle was torn. My doctor diagnosed that a part of the muscles covering my ankle were torn. Okay, so again, uh, they've got this sort of same issue here. The, the topic sentence is good. The first sentence is much clearer. I know that now they're saying that it's, it's not reliable. Um, and then they give this very good detailed example. And again, this example that they've given from their personal experience is really excellent. They've explained it. They've gone into detail. They've used good grammar to sort of, you know, move through the time. Although, you know, some of their word formations aren't so good. And they've got a couple of issues, um, with their sort of tenses, but overall this is a very good example. But now this is where we need to link back to the question. So whenever you finish writing an example like this, so he says, a doctor diagnosed that a part of the muscles covering my ankle were torn. So what? What was the point of making me read this example? You need to link back to the question. Okay, always link back to the question. Therefore, um, I, my, I have personally experienced that there is inf medical information online which should not be trusted, you know, or from that experience I realized it's, ve it's very important to carefully evaluate the quality of the information you read online. Something like that that links back to the question. Don't just leave it at the end of the example for me to work out what, <laughs> what the point of the example was, okay? So that's what this candidate needs to do to improve their ex like their expansion and come to some kind of conclusion about their example. Okay. So, but overall, I, I liked this um, example a lot. I liked what they discussed. Their vocabulary is quite good. Um, they sort of were able to convey like a good story. So I thought that was good. So let's look at the conclusion. In conclusion, in my opinion, medical information online would be helpful from time to time. Uh, can be helpful from time to time. However, 
The individual should keep in mind that trusting information on, on online platforms uh, a lot is a bit dangerous. Otherwise, the public would suffer from side effects by diagnosing wrongly. The public could suffer from side effects by being diagnosed uh, wrongly. Okay, so as a conclusion, this, this is a good summary. Um, they've sort of summarized that, you know, the overall their opinion is that although there are some positives, um, you shouldn't trust everything you read online. Um, the other thing that they could do to sort of expand this conclusion a little bit is to just maybe offer some kind of solution. You can do this with like an if sentence, you know. If online medical advice can be adequately regulated by the government or if um, medical advice online um, can be checked by medical professionals, this could help individuals um, get the benefit of, of the convenience of online diagnosis without so much risk. Something like that. If they wanted to add a sentence in like that, that would sort of make it a little bit better. But overall, so let's have a look at the scoring for this one. So my main issue is with this is sort of task achievement, okay? What I really wanted to do... Uh, just under a six, because what I really wanted them to do was to come to a stronger, stronger conclusion uh, and really link their examples well. Okay, that's what I was really missing from this essay. That the sort of um, the, the what they were sort of coming to in each paragraph was sort of like a bit weak, and they really needed a punchy final sentence in each paragraph linking their examples strongly back to the question and repeating their opinion, what they were going to argue, okay? Um, coherence and cohesion, I would give a six. I really like their sort of, um, their sentence transitions were good. Um, the way that they, they were giving two examples that were sort of like more like story-like, they were recounting two events that happened in the past. And I thought they did that quite well. Um, I liked the links between them and... You know, there were some mistakes, but I, I liked how they sort of linked together the events of the story about their father's acquaintance and about what happened to their ankle. Vocabulary, I also thought was pretty good. I'd give a six for vocabulary. Um, and for grammar, I would also give a six. They were mistakes. There were grammatical errors, but there was really only um, one or two places where I wasn't sure what they meant. Um, and so the errors, errors didn't really stop me understanding what they wanted to say most of the time. So overall, I pull this out like a six um, for this essay. And I would really ask them to sort of focus on um, ending their paragraphs more strongly. But overall, I thought there was a lot of very positive things in this essay. And they were able to write quite a lot of text during the time. So I think this candidate has a lot of potential to push up into a 6.5 or a 7. Um, if they can just work on um, organizing their argument a little bit more and linking their examples a little bit more strongly back to the question.